Now as he was going down the road, one came running and knelt before him. And he asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, and that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and he said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. I did it all. Wow. I never lied. I didn't steal. I didn't murder anybody. Remember, he said, if you hate your brother, you have murder in your heart. Ew. If you lust after somebody, you've committed adultery. You know the commandments. I kept them all. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him, and he said, oh, let's go back. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Have you ever, ever had a kid sass you? Where you thought, I, I'm going to smack you right now. <laughs> and yet you loved them. Jesus, looking at him, loved him. I think that's real significant. And he said to him, one thing you lack, son. I just told him that. One thing you laughed, I lacked. I added the son part in. One thing you lacked, kid, boy, man. Go your way, sell whatever you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And then come and take up the cross and follow me. You got to be kidding me, Jesus. You got to be kidding me, Jesus. He was sad at the word, and he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. As I was preparing this message, and God was speaking, something popped up in my file that I've never read before. And it's from 2009, and it said, Good morning. Safety management, health, and security are the skills I bring to my position, and currently I've worked for the same company for these past 31 years. The year is 2009, 20 or 15 years ago. Daily I train employees and I monitor, monitor the plant safety and all the company's security and oversee all the safety operations for all construction and all the contractors. I do it all. I have quality work, safety, integrity, good communication, solid management skills. I accomplish what my job requires I do. I'm well skilled. This is an iron plant, and it's geared for 450 working men, and I'm responsible for three separate plants in the state of Michigan. And yearly I travel in and out of the state to train other supervisors in connecting with the plants, and the environment can be dangerous, and each employee and contractor is required to be trained in order to become safety vigilant, and I'm in charge of that training. Lost time injury, injuries were considered very high prior to me becoming safety superintendent. Lost time accidents went from 140 to 14 the first year they hired me, thus saving the company hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've implemented programs, quality communications. I've helped make our company environmentally safe. And it's in my nature to do this. I have all the qualifications. I'm scanning this very quickly. You may question why I want to relocate to Texas. Having lived my entire life in Michigan, but in the past five years, three of my sons have relocated to Texas with their families, and my fourth son will be leaving for Iraq soon, and it's really nice to see my family. 
more than one time a year. I got all the qualifications for the job you're asking, and I'm an EMT. I've taken all the courses. I have my OSHA safety and health. I've taken the administrator courses. I've taken Excel and business writing and grammar skills and FEMA incident command and I'm a trainer for OSHA. I'm a confined space rescue and entry training. The only one in northern Michigan here at the time. I have radiation safety school and behavior-based safety training and I'm on the county and local emergency planning. I'm involved with the National Highway Safety and Traffic, Public Information and Industrial Ergonomics. I looked through this. The Lord said, that's part of your message. He's got every hydraulic course, MOSHA, MIOSHA compliance. He now knows how to avoid every citation and every liability. He won't let you get sucked under. You hire this guy. He knows his stuff. And I looked through all nine pages, and the list was long. Bloodborne pathogen trainer, emergency response team trainer, all the training skills. Nick had them all. His job description. I went through it and I thought, you've got to be kidding me. You want me to put that in the sermon? He said, absolutely. Every requirement, this young man in Mark 10 looked at Jesus and said, I have them all. I did them all. I'm successful in all of them. And Nick didn't know I was going to do this this morning. So he's like, did you make something in? Michael said there's, an, there's a, a job application and a resume in there. I said, yeah, I had to mix it in because there's no way I could come up with that. In fact, I don't even remember it that he applied to Texas. And then God said, no, you're not going anywhere. You're staying right here in East Jordan, and you're going to preach the gospel, and you're going to be here. Now, this is prior to us, five years prior to us becoming pastors here. We should have been in Texas. Yeah, Jordan Rivers wouldn't be here. You would not be hearing this sermon. Had not Nick listened to the voice. Okay, I hear from God. We're not going. Nope, we're supposed to be right here. Are you sure, God? Because this is not where my kids are. We'd move to a different place. We wouldn't he even have this governor overseeing us. Our kids came home recently from Texas, and they said, <clears throat> we don't like Michigan. You guys live in slavery. We live in freedom. You guys get to have so much government's influence over you. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't sneeze wrong. Don't go into this store. Wear your mask. During COVID, we decided it's better for us. We thought we might move home to Michigan one time. We said, no. No, it ain't. We're staying in Texas. Well, guess what? God said, I'm staying in Michigan. Did you know the missionaries don't always like to go to Africa? Who wants to eat a goat eye for supper? No. Do you always want to not have running water and live off the grid? Use a toilet under a tree? No. But do they because the call of God and the voice of God on their life is more significant than their flesh? Uh-huh. The Apostle Paul, his first name was Saul. He was named after King 
Saul. Did you know that? He was named after royalty. That was his name, Saul. He was the persecutor of the early church. Now his name is changed to Paul when he gave, when he had a Holy Ghost encounter for three days with Jesus on the road and got knocked off his high horse and was blinded. God finally had his attention because there was no internet. No voices speaking into him. No, nobody was calling him on the line. It was him and God. He had no distractions. Nobody interfering with the conversation. God's trying to have a, call, a phone call to you and talk to you. God's trying to speak to you. And a text message shows up. Hi, what's you doing this afternoon? You want to go for pizza tonight? <laughs> You're like, I've got to answer it. One thing I liked, and I heard um, Bill Johnson say this. You know, when you go to pray and all of a sudden you get all these distracting voices coming at you, all the things you need to get done. He said, actually, it's God. First time he got a hold of your attention, he's going to give you a big list. Always, and I like this, always take a notebook with you. Write down everything. Oh, I got to get this, yeah, this part of the lawn done. Yep, I, oh, that's right. I remember that now. I need to call this person on that. He said, just write it all down. Yep, write it in your notebook. God's reminding you of things that you need to complete. It's part of his conversation before he gets to the nitty gritty. Needs all those things. You've got them on a list now. You can do them later. Needs them out of the way. I am glad Nick did not listen to the voice that called him to Texas. Well, Paul, he was a Benjamite, Be Benjam Benjaminite, the same as Saul. His first missionary journey, his second missionary journey, his third missionary, missionary journey are all listed in Acts. Big journeys. He had a lot of troubles wherever he went. He was a prisoner at times. He refers to the mystery of Christ for which I'm in chains. Paul was sick at times. Oh, if you're spiritual, you never get sick. Let me tell you something. God works individually with different people. Okay? Nick had an injury to his ankle when um, a machine, uh, a dolly, broke and hit his ankle. It was not because he had sin in his life or that he ate an ice cream cone prior <laughs> or that he was disrespectful in a conversation when we were arguing. No. He broke a wheel and it hit him in the leg. Don't always get spiritual on something. Everything is different for everybody. I eat broccoli. Some of you, how many of you guys do not eat broccoli? Oh, wow. You guys need to like broccoli. I, I've got six, seven people in this room that don't eat broccoli. And you know I'm okay with that. You don't want broccoli, I'll eat your share. <laughs> okay. How many of you stay up late at night sometimes? Oh, there's a few. Just go to bed by midnight, please. <laughs> Just lay down and rest. But some people are early risers and some go to bed early and some go to bed late and sleep in we are different and God's callings on us are different we may hear his voice differently I wake up at three in the morning sometimes with God speaking to me how many of you guys have woke up at three in the morning and God's speaking to you uh-huh why does he pick three 
Couldn't he pick 7 a.m.? No. No, it's because it's the only time you shut up. And he's got your divine attention. Yeah, it's the way it goes. So, you know, I look at it and I think, Lord, okay, I got this. Anyways, I love how the Lord does it. In Paul, Paul, he was sick at times. In fact, he refers to his thorn in the flesh. He did not get healed on this earth of that. Well, he didn't have a whole lot of faith then. Uh, 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 yeah, you sit in that prison for six years. Tell me you ain't got some faith. In a dungeon in the dark. I'm telling you guys. Paul tells of many sufferings and perils that he endured. He says, I rejoice in my sufferings. You got to be kidding me. You rejoice in your sufferings. He's glad to suffer for the cause of Jesus Christ. Christ. The end. That's it. It's your whole sermon. No, it's not. I'm telling you this. You have maybe been a weenie in Christ. You are leaving that arena. You have made excuses, maybe, from hearing the gospel. And you have one headphone on to the world and one in tune to God. And this one is on, this volume is on loud. And that still small voice that's been trying to talk to you can't get through because you're not listening to the voice. I pray the internet goes down and your phone goes off. So that God can get a word in edgewise. I can't tell you how miserable I was when the June of 2024 or 22, the phone went off. Sunday morning, power went out. I remember Marsha and Jim thought we would have probably canceled church. Couldn't get a hold of nobody on the phone anyway. So, Well, we didn't because... Here we had power. We had no phone. We had power. So I went to church. I reached for my phone at least 20 times before I went to church and tried to get a signal. You know, the kind where you stand on one foot. Yeah. Nothing. I thought, well, surely at the church I'll get a signal. Nothing. Nothing. No overhead. Well, we had overhead songs, but we didn't have no... A computer, you know, you couldn't do certain things. We survived. I talked to Jasta face to face, and about Tuesday, I got in my car and drove to her house and said, I can't take it no more. I'm going through massive withdrawal. I have no phone, none. I cannot stand the silence of my life. I always had noise around me. And I began to hear God say, trial run. He said it as I woke up on Sunday morning. I just didn't know what he meant. Trial run, Daniil. Yeah. I'm getting you used to something. Lisa has an advantage over us. When, because she lives off the grid, She's already got some things down pat that I don't have down pat. She's learned hardship. Paul already learned hardship in prison. I just simply said, Lord, get me out of here. I'd just as soon die. Don't put me in no dungeon. And we have him, we've had a talk. You know the song, please don't send me to Africa. Pick somebody else, please, Lord. Something like that. I don't need the monkeys and dinosaurs. I, no, that's not it. 
But Lord, I like my convenience a little. So what do you have to say today? Some of you have a lot of training, but very little experience. Nick had a lot of training, a lot of experience. He was fully qualified for any job he wanted to go to. And God said, East Jordan. And I remember thinking, Lord, what is in East Jordan? And then when John and Julie came five or six years later, you know, and God was bringing them in, they said the same thing. What is in East Jordan? And he said, I'm bringing healing through East Jordan, and you're going to be a part of it. Okay. So get with it. Every week I want you to show a healing and make it a focal point again. Oh, okay. I can do that, Lord. You need to step up your game a little bit, Daniil. Some things you're not doing that you need to be doing, and you're highly trained, and you have experience, so quit making excuses. Don't make excuses why you don't worship the Lord. I'm really not into it. It takes an effort. I might have to clap. I might have to sing off key. I don't care if you sing off key. God don't care if you sing off key and worship him. Oh, I'm not used to it. I don't know how to open my voice and sing. I can understand if you have to sit down. If you're not feeling well, you've had surgery, you're weak in your body. I actually sit down sometimes because after 30 minutes of standing in one spot, Nick can't do that. In about 10 minutes, he's going to sit down. Okay? We're okay with that. But it doesn't mean you're not worshiping. For those of you who like to sleep in church and you like to doze off, sometimes it's the only place you actually, someone told me that, it's the only place I can actually get quiet and sleep. You need to understand the Sandman. You need to understand if this is where you sleep and your best sleep is here, you're in trouble. But one day out of the week, I can sleep in church. No, one day out of the week, your ears can be blocked so you can't hear the word of the Lord. Let's just be honest. I know I'm messing with your business, but I'm entitled to if I'm your pastor. And I mess with it nicely. I'm not mean. But I'm telling you, prepare to stay awake. Drink a cup of coffee. If coffee puts you to sleep, don't drink coffee. If sugar beefs you up and makes you awake, then eat some sugar. <laughs> if your blood sugar is going to drop, if you're concerned about the roast in the oven, turn it to 200 before you leave. That's how I go, okay? If you got to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom. If you come unprepared, Pastor, I'm really unprepared for this morning. So am I. <laughs> the Lord said to Hala, he said this to me today. I, I love it when he speaks and he wakes and he gives you a download. Learn to worship while you sing out loud because God is going to use your voice with your instrument that you will write songs to the Father <laughs> that will carry an anointing of my spirit that you've not experienced yet. Do it often. Go to the piano and say, okay, Lord, bring a pencil and paper with you for I'll begin to speak through you my anointing. And you will begin to minister it out. I just love that word for you. You know, Jenny sat here at the piano the other day, and she's plunking. She said, there's a song I wrote a long time ago. I can't, I haven't played it in so long, I don't even know how to play it. It's your anointing, that's what I covet. It's your anointing, that's what I need. Saturate my spirit, Lord. Come and cover me. Till, and I don't know it. 
till the people hear the word of the Lord and they're set free. And she's writing it down and she's trying to figure it out because she said, it's been way too long since I've done this. Some things are way too long. Some people here believe that they have done nothing for the kingdom of God because they don't count the seed that they have planted. Some plant seed, some water, and some harvest. I do all three in different stages. I personally don't like just planting seed because I like to see it when it comes up. But sometimes I've just planted seed into people's lives and I have to wait on God to water it so that it will grow and manifest, especially if you have stubborn soil. Now, none of you guys are stubborn. I know that. <laughs> but David, God says you have been stubborn to fulfill what I've told you to do. And you need to quit. It's time you not look back at where you were and words of the past. But you need the word of the Lord that speaks over you for now. This Kairos word. This anointing word. It's time to change and make some significant changes in your life that you do not repeat the past. When you go around in a circle and around and around, and God says, are you going to quit any time going around that circle? Good. Straighten your line out. Don't look back and get in your tractor and begin to plow this field. Time has been short for you. And there is time you have wasted that you are no longer going to waste. Because God says it's a waste of your life and your influence. And he wants to excel you forward and launch you forward when you stop going around the circle. Just stop and say, okay, God, I'm yours. I'm going to move forward now. Which direction? And Justin, you know, I heard the Lord say, Justin has an anointing because he asks my opinion. Oh, he asks my wisdom. And we, we got in a little conversation last night. I was talking to him about discipline from 50 years ago and how it's changed. And he started to tell me how he prays for the discipline and correction to be correct when he has to with Hadassah. I thought to myself, I don't know any dads out there praying. God, help me with the correct discipline. Now, I'm going to say this. He doesn't know I'm going to say it. He'll forgive me. You know, so when she's whiny or disobedient or something, he needs to put her in a corner. He looked for a corner in the church where he could let her stand and think until she was ready to say, okay, I apologize. He looked at our corners in the church. And there was something in every corner in the whole church, and you're right. <laughs> Except the closet. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I don't have it in me to go around the church and pray and ask that God will tell me which corner I should put you in when you are disobedient and not listening to God. God, which corner do you want them in? Hmm. How many times have you daddies, are you listening to me daddies, have you prayed for your sons and your daughters that God would discipline them correctly and love them with your love? Or that he would give you, mamas, the wisdom on how to discipline your child when they're disrespectful or disobedient. You guys pray that way? 
Well, I never did, really. I just went on what I had learned. But how about if I went on what God says? Because there are people here today, this is a hard sermon, that need to go stand in the corner and tell they will hear the voice of God speak to them and go, you're right, God. I apologize. I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to straighten me out. Sorry, I used your example, but I like it that you pray. I like it that you're a man of God who asks God's opinion. Now, I'm not bragging on him. I'm telling you the Lord said, he asks my wisdom. And because of that, I will give it to him. King David. Okay, what do you want? All the riches in the kingdom? No, I just want wisdom and understanding. Okay. Wisdom. Greg, I love that you're hungry for God. And that you seek him with all your heart. And that you want him. Now, Greg is not little in stature, and I remember a word that said he was a mighty warrior, and not due to the fact you're what, six, six foot three? Am I right? Six, four. So when he stands beside me, he towers over me. Saul did too. And David was a runt. David was, what do you call David? David was the smallest of the litter of the boys in the family. And when Saul went to anoint the new king, you know, he said, of the, of the tribe of Jesse, of, of the family of Jesse, okay, bring me your boys. Bring the sons of Jesse. Bring your boys before me. First one comes through. You got to read it in the book of Samuel, I believe, or Kings, probably in the book of Kings. Samuel? First Samuel? He comes through and he goes, ah. Nope. God says, nope. But God, he's really good looking. Look how tall he is. I don't care. I'm not looking for tall. Jeez. I'm looking for heart. Next one comes through. Nope, not him either. Third one. Nope, not him either. Fourth, fifth, sixth. God, that's it. Surely this sixth one. Nope. I believe there were seven. And if I got it right, he said, God said no on all of them. Do you have another one? Well, there's this runt. He's out taking care of the sheep. Did you know the sheep, Jassy, you know this, most of the sheep herders and shepherds were women. Women. Yeah, girls. Now, if you can go to YouTube and look up Michael, and I don't know if you can play it from there and work with Nick on it, there's a, a video of a shepherd and the shepherd is getting beat up by the sheep. It's a shepherd girl. And she's walking down the road. And the sheep comes up and bam, takes her out. I'm talking damage. Damage. The girls were the shepherds. But let me say it like this to you, okay? David... He never flinched. He was sent out to the field because he was low on the totem pole. What you don't understand in Jewish history is that they questioned if he belonged to the family. You don't know this. But his dad, Jesse, felt like, you know, Ruth the Moabite gave birth to Obed, my, my granddaddy, or my father. And I've been born of uh, just a lineage that is not good. And I'm going to put my wife away, and I'm not going to have relations with her. I'll just have them with 
my concubine instead. <coughs> and uh, I'm not going to have a physical relationship with my wife. I, I'm done having kids because th there's just, this is not good. This is not good to be of this lineage and this descent. I'm serious. That's in Jewish history. And you can find scripture reference to it from David. Go look in the book of Psalms. talks about his brothers and how they treated him because they didn't think he belonged and he was a bastard. Okay? But he wasn't. Because the concubine went to the wife and she said, I will not disregard you nor dishonor you. And she snuck her in her place so that she had relationships, a physical relationship with Jesse. I don't know how you can't tell what's your husband or, or a wife in your arms if she was your wife. But apparently back then they could not tell the difference. I don't know if they wore an ugly veil over their face or something. It was too dark, pitch dark. So we sneak in your wife. And you don't know it's your wife. And she conceives. And she comes to him later and she said, I'm with child. He goes, not mine. I ain't been with you. Oh, yeah, it's yours. It ain't mine. Yes, it is yours. I ain't been with you. Yeah, the concubine snuck me in. And when he was born, he had red hair. First of all, tall, dark, and handsome ran in the family. Now you got a redhead mutt. We have a couple redheads that have been born in our family. Thank the Lord, they are the most adorable kids you've ever seen. But you looked at them, you know, when, when Jason was born. Jason was a miracle, you know, after uh, a vasectomy was a, a year and a half old. Rebecca called me and Nicholas, and they said, Mom, Rebecca's pregnant. And I thought, how? You had a vasectomy. I said, well, only this has happened one other time in all of the Dallas history, in all the hospitals, but I'm shooting bullets. <coughs> That's what he exactly said. <coughs> We're pregnant. I thought, Lord, this must be the child you promised them. <coughs> And the Lord said to me, this is their reward. And, and the scripture immediately came, children are as a reward from the Lord. Well, Rebecca had four girls, and immediately she knew this one is different. This was God chosen. This was an I plan the right time of the month. Well, guess what? King David was God chosen. And when he was born, he was kind of petite, <clears throat> red, curly hair, from what I understand. And they're like, he ain't, uh, he's, he's the runt. He does not belong to us. Send him to the field to be a shepherd. When you get that video, you can let me know. And so he, did you say you wanted to say something? Oh, you gave me one of those throat lozenge. So he went to the field where certainly there will be wild animals that will kill him off. I'm serious. That's in the history. Certainly there will be a bear, a lion, a wolf. There'll be something that will kill that kid off. We won't have to claim him as ours. Saul goes, please call that boy out of the fields and bring him up. Do you know what it was like for King David? I love this. <laughs> he comes up to him. Now you, you need to understand this, Greg. He had a heart for God. It wasn't about his size. It was, 
about, he had a heart to run after God. And you have a heart like that. And God said, tell him to run. Okay, I'll tell Greg, run, Greg, run. Run after God. Wow. I love it. King David comes before him. And Saul says, Samuel says, was it Samuel? Did I get the word wrong? It was Saul? No, it was Samuel. Samuel says, him? Him? Him, the Lord said. But he's small in stature. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the inside, not the outside. I'm looking for a heart. So God said, Eric, I'm looking for a heart, Eric. That will desire to do my will. I remember the first Sunday, you know, that our security wasn't there, the, you know, the head of security. And I, Nick got this call. <coughs> I think it was you. <coughs> was it Eric that called you? He said, I'm supposed to do that. I'm supposed to head up the security over there. I'll do that. Now, if you know Eric, <coughs> sorry, Eric, I'm not meaning to embarrass you. Eric is kind of reserved. Um, Eric holds back a little. Doesn't always say what he's thinking, although he needs, he's better than he used to be. I'm serious. There was a time Eric couldn't put his words together. And then he married Chelsea because... She was like 10 steps ahead of him talking. He caught up with her. He did. <coughs> now, now he has a voice and an opinion. <laughs> he calls Nick on the phone. He says, I'm supposed to do this. I heard from the Lord, yeah. This, that's what I want to do. I want to sit in the corner of the church. <coughs> really? And I want to just watch the security. I can do that. King David said, I can do that. But do you understand? I'm the runt. Do you understand who you're picking for king? God told Jeremiah, I knew you in your mother's womb. He knew him in his, mother, his mother's womb. God knew Mary. I call her Mary Mary because there was a, lots of Marys at one time. Mary came running into the church one day. We had a food pantry, and she said, I said, can I pray for you, Mary? And she began to share her heart. And I prayed for her, and she said, I don't get to take communion in the Catholic church because I was divorced once. And so that's out of the question. I, I don't get to, I don't get to belong. And yeah, I've got much to give, but I don't get to do it because, because I don't qualify. And I remember telling her, you qualify with God. Oh, yes, you do. You just come right on over to Jordan Rivers. You'll find out you qualify with God. I don't know how many years ago that was. At least five. Mary found out that God loves her, her in spite of any mistake in your past, she's loved. And you stayed faithful, and your hubby got born again, and he's in heaven. Certain things happen to certain people. I know this. Betty has a heart that gives just pours it out. It's just in her nature. It was in her, it was inbred in her. I can look at these women. I can look at Lisa. I can look at Julie. Anything I would ask them to do, they would just do. 
because they're givers. They're givers. I have different prayers for different people that I pray. I'm not going to tell you my prayers. I pray them differently. I'm glad you're finally back from Florida. I'm glad that every time I call Renee, Billy goes, Pastor D, I hear him in the background. I love the voices. I love those that say, I'll do that. I can do that. I love that God knew Jeremiah right from, his, right from the womb. The word of the Lord came and said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And you were born and I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I think that there are certain anointings on people from birth. And you know it. You know what's there. From the moment you held them, you knew there was a call of God on their life. You just knew it. You just knew it. Maddie, I heard the Lord say this. You are written on the palm of his hands. In Isaiah 49, 16, it says, Behold, I've inscribed you on the palms of my hands, and your walls are forever before me. Your name is written on God's hands. Every time God looks down to do anything or moves his hand, Maddie's name shows up. Your names are written on the palm of his hand. Every time you ask the Father something, your name is written on the palm of his hand. He formed you from the womb. And nothing is going to separate you from God. And he's going to bring you all home. He's going to bring you home. Not soon enough. I tell the Lord, Lord, I'm really, I'm really needing heaven, like right about now. God, I'm really tired of this earth. Massive things are happening all over the world. And I know I'm in my own little comfort zone, still finishing up the last of the tomatoes to can. The last of everything. Waiting for the coming of the Lord and how blessed I am while half of Israel slept in a bomb shelter last night. But I heard the Holy Spirit say this. Now I don't know who this one's for. Nicole, I love your heart for God. It's really good to see you, that you didn't have to work a Sunday. I hope where they put you that you, you don't go in until a Sunday afternoon. They, you can still come to church. This is what I heard the Holy Spirit say to somebody here. There is no pit too deep. There is no night too dark. There is no water too deep that I will not find you. Isaiah 43, 1. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. And when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I will be with you through the rivers. They will not over, overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Michael, you are a man of influence. If you only knew, if you only knew the influence that God has for your life. When you speak, when you speak, you will be heard. When you speak with wisdom. Nick is a man of influence. <laughs> a prophetic word came over the other day for Nick. 
And it says, his words will bring a calm in, in, the, in what's going to happen ahead. Now, anybody that knows Nick's resume in leadership, okay, he had to tell a lot of people to get off the ladder or they were going to fall. He had to look at a lot of people who had their ears clogged with wax or hadn't been wearing safety equipment on their ears that were going deaf. And he had to tell them what to do. And he meant it. So he walked in authority. That was his skill. And now the Lord speaks and says he will bring a calm to the chaos ahead. Carl does that. We talked about it before, meekness. It's one of those gifts you're going to be speaking on on Wednesday. We have foundations that begin at 530, and then at 7, we're finishing up the fruits of the Spirit. Meekness. Don't you love meekness? It's where you can come into a room and bring calm to chaos. I need that on my resume. I need when God looks at my resume. <laughs> I'm going to read this scripture one more time because I just found the second half. Fear not, for I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You're mine. And when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you, for I am the Lord your God. I thought, whoa. Okay. I need on my resume... Walks with wisdom. Here's my voice. Prays often. <laughs> you know what my resume really says? Doesn't always have all the wisdom. Doesn't always pray often. Misses the mark sometimes. Feels like she's not enough sometimes. To lead all these sheep all the way home. She's a shepherd. Did you ever find that shepherd video? Where she gets knocked flat on her fanny? Michael, did they ever find that shepherd video? Let me tell you about it. She's herding the sheep across the road. And one sheep decides to take her out. Hits that shepherd, knocks her down. She's a flying. And then pounces on her. I just pray for the grace to lead you home. I pray for the grace of God. That in everything I do, when I stand before him... Because if you don't think pastors have to stand before God, we stand separately and give an account. Am I correct? A higher level. He goes, <clears throat> okay, Daniil. Let's see the resume. I believe when God looks at my resume, he goes, there ain't much to work with. Yeah, you have some talent as an artist. Mm-hmm. At one time, you could really sing on key good. Yep, you're still carrying an anointing as a minstrel. Yeah, you still lack wisdom. You better ask of me, and I will give it to you liberally. Yep, you have the gifts. You need to, you need to stoke the fire a little more. You need to pray more. You need to be more faithful. You don't, that's exactly where God has me all the time. All the time. So when I take the pulpit, I know my failure. Oh, yeah, I know it. That's why I just pray. That when it's time, I will have given you the right 
word of the Lord. Isaiah 41, last scripture. Ten. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Wow. Verse 11. Behold, all who are enraged and inflamed against you will be put to shame and confounded. They who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. And you will seek those who contend you, but you will not find them. They who go to war against you will be as nothing, as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. I am the Lord who says, fear not, I'm going to help you. I thought, that's good. I'm glad you're going to help me, God. He said, if you listen to the voice. You ignore my voice, you're going to crash right in the clouds. You ignore my voice? The mountain ahead of you? You will not make it over that mountain. You will crash and burn. That's how God talks to me. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Oh, yes, sometimes his presence is so sweet. But there's times with ministers, that's exactly how he talks. You want to hear the voice of the God? Sometimes he doesn't say it like this. Oh, see when you're on the front row, I can pick on you. Oh, Jasta. It's going to be a good day. You just, you just be patient and calm. I've got everything in control. He doesn't say in that tone of voice. A lot of times he gives her a scripture. says, fear not, I'm with you. Be not dismayed, I'm your God. But she hears the voice and follows it. I asked the Lord, Lord, this song at the very end. You picked this song for who? It doesn't even go with my sermon. It does a little bit, but you know, not a lot. If Nick could pull that up. If you know what, you can go ahead and sing with it. But when I heard it, I thought, Lord, how are you going to make everything blend this morning? That's what I asked him. So I want you to hear this. Nick, play that again really soft, really soft. You don't have to uh, put the picture up on the screen, but some of you here have wondered, am I going to make it all the way home? Am I really going to make it? And I heard God say, if they will listen to my voice all the way, if they'll follow my word all the way, they're in good soil. They're, go and they're in good soil. They're being watered. They're being nurtured. If they remain faithful, they hear the word of the Lord and hear my voice. I'll bring them all the way home. I'm going to pray over you this morning. God, you see. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. You see every person here, God. You see their ups, their downs. You see their ins, their outs. You see them when they have run from you, when they have ignored your wisdom. And God, I thank you. You have pursued them and you've never stopped. It's never stopped, Mark. He chases you down said that one's mine and 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 that one and that one and that one this is mine I've got them their their name is written on the palm of my hand I've not let them go Jackie you've not been let gone God didn't say go he said I got you 
You're going to hold tighter. Father, I ask him to hold tighter. There would be more fierce in you to never let you go. They would remain yours. Out of all the ten virgins, there'd be one of those five that said, My oil, I continually fill it. Continually fill it because I need more, Jesus. Remain faithful, says the Lord. Father, I ask that the blessing of the Lord would follow them. The healing of God would penetrate them even now. Every gut ache that they've had, in Jesus' name, I command it to be healed and made whole. All their digestive issues healed and made whole. That they can receive nutrients correctly. And every excuse they have made would leave them. Now, devil, right now, I bind you in the name of Jesus and I take authority over that spirit that has held them captive. That spirit that has held them in slavery in Jesus' name and every voice that has spoken over their life and has spoken death over their life. I rebuke it. I command the words to fall null and void. They will not listen to the criticism. The criticism of the enemy. No matter where it comes from. No matter high up the chain it comes from. They will follow you. They will be in your will. And I command the sickness and disease to come out of their body in Jesus' name now. All the way. Out of them in Jesus' name. Every word that was spoken over them. And against their life. I break the authority and the power of it. For they belong to you. Heal them, Jesus, all the way. Heal them all the way. Restore them all the way. Don't let one person here, Father, fall away. I ask they would all escape what is to come and accounted worthy. Because they have been on your tail. They have been right there going, I'm following God after God. I'm following after God. God is not following after you. You are following after him. And God, I thank you for their faithfulness their love and compassion and the passion they have for you, Jesus, never ends. Minister to them. Minister to them, I ask in Jesus' name. Chelsea, as God gives you words to sing or to say, you are to speak them out. God will give them to you and you'll begin to hear them and you'll begin to follow after them. Listen to the voice. It'll take you all the way home. All the way. Father, I thank you that the anchor of the Lord has been deeply instilled in us. For we are grounded on your word. As we leave today, or as we stay and sit in your presence, Father, I thank you that you are most gracious to us. You've loved us with an everlasting love. I call the people blessed today. I call the people blessed and redeemed. May the blessing of the Lord go before them. The glory of the Lord be their rear guard. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, may the name of the Lord be on their lips and forever be praised. In the name of Yeshua, your son Jesus, be it done. Amen. Amen. Amen.